Welcome back again to the third example. Recap, we're talking about the cross-industry standard process for data mining, CRISP-DM, coming from business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. In our last example on this CRISP-DM framework, we talked about smart infrastructure, specifically on certain kinds of what we call enterprise AI aspect, decision support for sales representatives to data mine and identify the optimal price, kind of a nice sales price, kind of a nice application. That means, you know, you as a sales rep, right, you want to build the best quote, the best offering, the best price, right, for your client, but also for your company. You know, especially newer colleagues in the race is a bit of tough to estimate what is the best price actually we, we can provide to the client, right? And here we were asked, you know, can machine learning and AI help for doing that? First, again, business understanding, right? So if you scale in an organization on sales, you will see that, you know, there's quite some deviations in, in you know, offerings that we make, right? Per country, per business type, per product, right? So, and, and it's experience, basically, and client experience from history, from a gut feeling, basically, from the sales, right? What is the best price I want to take over to my client? But uh, and now I take over the, the client of my colleague, right? I don't know. I wonder what kind of price did they offer? Did they go with some new quote? Did they end up higher, lower? Will I somehow retain the client, right? What prices can be charged? So that means talking to you not only sales, but also management views, right? Brings you quite some impact and insights. You know, what could be a great offer? You need to get commitment on these kinds of aspects for top management, identify your key stakeholders, and be aware of this, those kinds of business processes where quite across, you know, countries and are different in organizations, right? Um, about products and about uh, the country fit. So pay attention to that. Second comes the data understanding. So data understanding is obviously, you know, um, equipped with the internal tools mostly. You have something like Salesforce or you have something like an ERP system like SAP, right? And they come with different kind of data and different kind of differences, right? In terms of financial information, then you need customer information, sales type, product information, also the customer, right? What kind of customer? Is it a frequent flyer customer? Is it someone who, you know, was previously not known? What kind of information, financial information do we have, right? Good business understanding helps us you know, to make sense out of data. And with that, we need the feedback and the impact and the contextualization of experts in the field. Talk to sales, talk to the folks that actually have customer impact and have customer interaction. They will provide you somehow the gut feeling to see I'm looking on these kinds of features, on these kinds of tractions uh, on the client engagement. Then comes data processing, and then you see that, you know, data quality in, in a lot of cases, especially if you include heterogeneous databases, ERP systems here, Salesforce here, quality data here, right? These come not necessarily fused and, and mapped to each other. Again, you need to talk and conduct various workshops and to see how you can identify influence from factors again, but also how different modalities map to each other. Make that, you know, together with the data experts. Make that and perform that with the business expert together. Focus on data quality, especially in that. And be aware of that use it, use your tool. Need some kinds of explainability to that. Decision on client side need to have some explainability. How you prepare that? What kind of factors, what kind of features, what kind of influencing factors need to be transparent to the users? Then comes the modeling part, obviously quite nice, right? And means training right, from a technical system perspective, but also from a bit of the business view. In our deployment here, we identified that, you know, uh, certain kinds of business perspective in let's say, you know, inflation and actually the COVID, the pandemic, it turned out that the machine learning module um, is much more 
adaptable to those sudden surprises, such as a pandemic, in forecasting it, than the human uh, history and this human gut feeling. But that means also, you know, be aware of which information needs to be pulled in what kind and deployed in which application backwards. So make it standardized as possible, but make it loosely coupled and tightly integrated. APIs, especially in the internal processing world. And user testing is something of important, especially also, and what we call that an A-B testing. And, and the A-B testing means you differentiate A to a test group, which uses your application, right? And gets the proposals on price recommendation, go up, go down, keep the price. And B, the controlled group, no price recommendation. So you have enough data points to compare the impact of your solution, which is in this case very of importance, obviously. And this A and B testing need to be done as soon as possible. On the other, also representative to the role that you have, countries, products, businesses that you need. Test and validate it, shape A and B testing for your environment. Con consider for that and design for it. Last but not least, you know, deployment. And deployment comes in various flavors. On the one side, obviously, again, on user application, means how can actually sales rep be augmented by the technology capabilities, but also about dashing a central reporting tool in these kinds to ensure, right, also the manager buy-ins to have KPIs measured and visible to see how the impact of your solution is. Also, these applications both the augmentation of the sales rep, as maybe the mobile phone application, but also the central reporting cockpit, should be done not by yourself. Co-create that with the stakeholder, with the management, because in the end, they need to trust your application and they need to see the right information at the right time with the, with the best explainability you can get. So ensure that your application is kept for both the business as well, obviously, as an added value AI solution. So that sums up, actually, the business and data understanding module using the CRISP-DM methodology. Four lessons I want that you will take forward in your, in your journey. First, put yourself in the customer's shoes, in the perspective, and understand it not only from an AI development, but also from their perspective. Second one is, you know, adjust your strategy along the line as you learn about data and data understanding and data preparation. Don't be fixed mindset here, right? The business objective right, may change while you develop that. Third, build an AI model, but benchmark it and test it as soon as possible. End-to-end -end integration is of importance. And fourth, you know, monitoring, hit the real world. And user data and real world data will look different. Don't stay on the experimental side, on your internal experimental side, but hit the real world and identify A and B testing, how you can scale, but also show the value of the application to all stakeholders. And with that, let's continue our learning journeys in the next session.